Good Monday. Good Monday to all of you. We are excited. We are thankful to be on this morning. I am yours truly, God's servant, Bishop Lamonte Calvin. I'm glad that you're tuned in this morning. I'm glad that you're tuned in to Motivation of Monday. This is the place. Amen. You are officially tuned into the place called Motivation of Monday. I want to thank God for all of you that are tuning in. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for what God is going to do, what God is going to say. You are officially on Motivation of Monday. So we're grateful. We're grateful for God doing all that he is doing. I am glad that this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and do what? We're going to be glad in it. We're going to be glad in the fact of knowing that God is on our side. Glad in the knowing that God chose us today to do what he called us to do Even because of you. We are on Motivation of Monday. I said, because of you, we are a part of what God is doing on this morning. So let's do this. Amen. I know you're here. I know you're, in, you're going to enjoy it. I know you're thankful that you're here. But let's hit the share button so we can share it with those that may not know about Motivation of Monday, those that may not be tuned in. Let's share it with them so they can hear a word from God. They can be empowered this morning. They can be empowered this day. And so let's hit the share button. If you can share it with as many people, your friend, your partner, your, your cousin, your nephew, whoever, amen, your prayer partner, share this word with them, your best friend, amen. Uh, so let them know that Motivation of Monday is on with yours truly, God's servant, Bishop Lamonte Calvin. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to know that God is doing great things. I'm grateful to know that he's doing awesome things, amen. And there is nobody like the God we serve. I said, there is no one like the God that we serve. And watch what God do in this next season for you, sir. Watch what God does in this next season for you, ma'am. He's doing great things. So let's go ahead and share it. Amen. Share it with as many people you can. And we're going to get ready to pray. But the Bible said, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. The spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. So we need to know 
that we can share this video so someone can watch it once again we'll be glad we're glad that you're tuning into the powerful place and that's motivation of monday and we're grateful for it so as we get ready to pray amen we're going to uh you're sharing the video with those and we'll break we're appreciate it amen let's pray father we thank you for this day we thank you for who you are what you are to us and we're grateful for all these things that you're going and lord all the things you're going to do those that are in need of prayer this morning we strengthen them we bless oh god we pray that you will bless them we pray that you would touch them in the name of jesus whatever you need to do god we're going to believe for that and lord whatever is being done we're going to trust you for that and for to you we give the glory to you. We give the praise and all these blessings we ask and all these things we ask God that as those that are watching now and those that are going to watch later will be empowered by your word and strengthened by your word. In Jesus name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Somebody clap your hands with me. Let's praise the name of the Lord <laughs> because God is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. And we're truthfully grateful for the things that God is doing and for what he's taking us to. Well, not only what he's bringing us through, but what he's taking us to. Come on, somebody. Amen. I am, if you're just tuning in, I am your servant, yours, yours truly, God's servant. Amen. Bishop Lamonte Calvin, I'm grateful to be with you this morning. To all of you that have, this is your first time, let me know down in the timeline. Hey, I'm. this is my first time on. Let me greet you with God's divine love. I want to love on you. I want to show you, I appreciate you tuning in and sharing the video. Amen. So we thank you for tuning in. Uh, to those of you, your first time, you never, let me know that you're on here for the first time. For you that never said nothing to me, say something to me. Let me know you're tuning in. Amen. To you that came back week after week, month after month, I want to thank God for the motivation of Monday family. We're connected. We're bound. Amen. We're bonds. <laughs> We're in the, this thing together. And we thank God for what God is doing and all the things that God is going to do to a church. I pastor round about their new direction, outreach ministry, well known as the purple church. Thank God for you. Thank God for what he's doing. Amen. I love you. I appreciate you to my lovely wife, lady C. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And we're grateful for it. Amen. For all the things you are doing, God is doing. You may say, Bishop Calvin, what can I do to get involved with more of what you're doing? Well, I want to encourage you. You can go, amen, right after this message, right after the word, you can go, amen. We have what we call Motivation of Monday, the podcast version. It's been uploaded. It's been updated. You can go now, well, not now, but after you get off and you're working out, you're getting the muscles and biceps and triceps, you're doing your chores around the house, you can go and listen to my Motivation of Monday, amen, and be blessed. Also, you can join us tonight in prayer at, 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 not, not at 7 o'clock. You can join us in prayer, and I promise you, you will be blessed with through the prayer that God is doing in this ministry. We are a praying church. Hallelujah. And those of you that would like to sow, you said, man of God, I want to sow towards this. This information will be back, back on after the in the outro. You can sow to, sow to where you want to grow to. Amen. You can sow your seed. So God can grow your seed. But most of all, we thank God for you tuning in. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for being a part of us. I am, once again, yours truly. I am the uh, servant of God here to serve you on this morning. So thank God you can go and watch all those things. Listen, y'all need to watch. Y'all need to go and listen to the podcast. I'm telling you, the podcast is blessing. I mean, you can go and listen to it. If it's on Instagram, if it's on, if it has a podcast, Motivation of Monday is there. This is the Motivation of Monday podcast version. Different message, but glory to God, but the same God. Amen. All right, I did all that. Time is running. Somebody tell me what time is it? It's word time. Come on. I need somebody to shout it with me. It's word time. Tell somebody. Let somebody know. It's time for the word of the Lord. It's word. I need y'all to shout it. Amen. It's word time. It's time. For the word of God, and we believe in God for his word. We believe in God for his word. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Y'all know it. Some of you know it by heart, but I want to revisit this. Amen. Because I want to tell somebody this morning, I want to inform you this morning that it's word time. 
First Peter 5 and 6. Watch what it says. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast it all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren, amen, that are in the world. Here it is, in the world. Here, here's my main topic, my main verse. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's go back to the 10th verse. But the God of all grace, who have called us, has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, <clears throat> after, somebody ought to shout after, after that you have suffered a while, will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. After the God of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, come on, <laughs> will establish, he will strengthen, he will settle you. My God, amen. He'll make you perfect. After you have suffered a while, I want to use for a topic, amen, for somebody. I don't know who all this for, but I just want to use two words for a topic. After this, <laughs> that's it. After this, now you can put whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say before. You can say, I'm going to get my breakthrough after this. I'm going to get my amen, my new house after this. I'm going to get my new uh, whatever. I'm going to get my, hey, my healing after this. I'm going to get my joy after this. I'm going to get my peace after this. I'm going to, I just want to tell you, after this what are you saying man of god after this something gonna happen for you <laughs> in other words you gotta go through this my god you have to go through this i don't know what your this is but god told me to tell you you gotta go through it because after this my god god's gonna do great things i almost said it earlier but after this things are gonna begin to fall in place for you sir things are gonna Fall in place for you, ma'am. After this, after the Bible said, after you have suffered a while. He didn't say before it. He said after this, after you have gone through your this. I, uh, amen. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say after this, after I go through this, after I go, encounter this, after I, <clears throat> amen, come out of this, things are going to turn around. In the, and by the way, while I'm speaking this morning, God is turning situations around, sir. While I'm speaking this morning, God, because you're receiving this word or you're hearing this word and you're receiving this word, God said, even after you get off today, my God, I hear you, Lord. After you get off this live today, some, you're going to see some things change from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. God said, after this, my God. He said, humble yourself under the, what, after, wait a minute, let me deal with after. What do you mean after this? After this is a proposition, it is dealing with the element of time, past, present, future. Amen. God said what you went through in the past and what you're experiencing in your present is preparing you for your future. In other words, whatever you have gone through, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you are encountering, God said after this, I have something for you. In other words, you have a great thing. That's coming after this. You have a good. That's why I love the word of the Lord. In Psalm 30 and 5. It said weeping may endure for a night. Suffering may endure for a night. Come on. But joy <laughs> comes after this. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. So after you have gone through the after you have dealt with this. God said this is the moment you're going to find yourself. Amen. Experiencing his blessing. Because after this. After this, sir, after this, ma'am, yes, you got to go through this. I know you're saying, Bishop, you don't know what I'm going through. I may not know, but I know the God that's bringing you through. You said, he said, after this, you got to understand that after this, the thing's going to fall in place. After this, 
things are going to work for your good. Come on, I hear you, Romans 8 and 28. But we know all things work together for good. I'm a, I, <laughs> to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. After this, after this, amen, you're going to find out, amen, this, that situation that has invaded your life and has you thinking on it day and night. Oh, my God. What is your this? <laughs> what is your situation that calls you to think on the morning time, in the midnight hour, in the noon day? Amen. And as you thinking on it, after this, God said, I'm going to do great things. God said, after this, I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure that your name is great. After this, he said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to touch you. After this, he said, humble yourself. Here it is. Under the mighty hand, God, you know. God's hand. I tell anybody, out in the mighty one, two, three, four, five. Five is the number of grace. It is the number of favor. God said, humble yourself under my hand and I will give you favor. Woo, God Almighty. God said, humble yourself under my mighty hand and I will release favor upon you. Somebody ought to shout favor. Somebody believe in God for favor. This situation that you are experiencing is only going to lead you to the favor of God. This thing that you're experiencing only going to lead you to the promises of God. This thing that you're experiencing, sir, this thing that you're experiencing, ma'am, only going to push you towards your promise, only going to push you towards your uh, purpose. Because after this, God is going to do great things. You say, I might be crying, but after this, come on, I might be going through, but after this, I may be suffering, but after this, I may be in pain, but after this, come on, I may be discouraged, but after this, you may be in amen, discouraged this morning, but after this, you may be in pain this morning, but after this, you may be struggling right now, but after this, after this, God is going to show you that he's going to do great things. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. God said, in due time, if you humble yourself, every divine promise comes with a personal responsibility. Oh, God. Let me help y'all today. I said every divine promise come with a personal responsibility. What 2 Corinthians 7, 4, 3, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. God said, in order for me to heal the land, you got a personal responsibility. There's some things that you got to do. There's some things that you got to take, amen, in place. And you got to believe that God is going to do it. You got to believe that God is going to do it on your behalf, sir. You got to believe that God is going to do it on your behalf, ma'am. He said, after this, after this, God's going to do exceeding thing. He's going to do a blessed thing. He's going to do a, a for sure thing. After this, every divine promise comes with a personal responsibility. Every divine promise comes with a personal responsibility. Watch what God is going to do. He's going to do it for you, sir. He's going to do it for you, ma'am. He's going to do it for you in this thing that God is going to do. He's going to do it just for you. After what? Somebody say it with me. After this. After this, God is going to do it. After this. What is your this? Come on. Somebody ought to shout it this morning. My God, what is your this? Whatever you're going through, it's going to push you to what you're going to. <laughs> I said, whatever you're going through is pushing you to what you're going to. After this, my God, God is going to do a great thing. God is going to do it. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Come on. The hand of God. When God's hand is on you, he's protecting you. He's guiding you. He's, he's protecting you. The bullet should have killed you, God Almighty. The, the, and the relationship should have caused you to be out of your mind. But guess what? God's hand was on you. All this time, the hand of God was on you. All this time, God was blessing you. All this time, God was shielding you. Somebody ought to shout it after this. I don't know what your this is, but I promise you, after this, God has some great things up. Every personal a pro, I mean, divine promise have personal responsibility. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time, my God, that he may exalt you in due time. Sometimes, my God, the reason we don't have it or we want, we, sometimes we pray for a certain thing and the reason we don't get it is God said it's too early. <laughs> God said it's too early. He said, if I give it to you now, 
you're going to mess it up. You're going to let somebody else mess it up. He said, but I got to give you, I got to wait till you are uh, brown enough. Y'all remember mama put that cake in the oven and mom, you'd be like, mama is ready. But mama would look, she would flip that. Well, this was before they had the light. She would open that oven. She said, say, uh-uh. It's not brown enough. Come on, somebody. God said, I got to do something. I got to make sure that you are ready for what I have for you. He said, after this, my God, I don't know who this is for, but I feel I feel a shifting even while I'm preaching this, even I'm speaking this. I feel a shifting even in your situation. After this, sir, after this, ma'am, he said, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. And God said, in due time, I'm going to show you how much I care for you. God said, I'm not going to rush the process. He said, cast all your care up on him, but he cared for you. My God, God is the one that cares for you. God said, I care so much about you that I plan your future. <laughs> he said, I care so much about you. I plan your future. Come on, Jeremiah. Well, yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, well, I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of peace, and not even to give you an expected end. God said, I plan you a future. So therefore, be confident in the thing I plan for you. Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident of this very thing. He which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God said, I have a plan for you. I have some establishment for you. That's why you got to go through this. He said, you got to go through it because after this, Mm, my God, he said, after this, no one cooks a cake. Come on. Y'all know that. No one. Well, some cases, my wife was, uh, I heard the stirring of the bowl. I thought it was a cake. I said, I want the bowl <laughs> because I thought it was going to be the cake mix in the bowl. But but guess what? No one sits there and eat all the, uh, the filling of the cake. My God, we put it in the oven so we can have a real cake. God said, you can't sit there and wait for it. Your blessing is when you go through the process. God Almighty, I don't know who I'm talking. God said, your blessing is when you go through the process. You're going to get the great thing. He said, be sober. In other words, God said, be stable. This is the hour that you become stable, sir. This is the hour you be stable, ma'am. You're not drunk in your emotion. You're not drunk in your feeling. God said, be stable. In other words, he going to cause you to be focused. Somebody about to focus like never before. He said, sharpen your focus. Tune in to your, amen, your mission. Tune into what God has. He said, be sober. He said, be vigilant, my God. He said, because your adversary, let's deal with sober. He said, be sober. He said, don't allow this thing to hinder you. From, don't allow this to hinder you from that. <laughs> God, I'm like, he said, after this, you're going to get that. My God, don't allow this to hinder you from that. Whatever God has for you. It is for you. After this, somebody ought to shout it. You ought to type it on the timeline. After this, and just throw your hands up. My God, you know, your hand emoji just mean after this, it is what it is. Whatever God said to do, it is what it is. And he said, be sober, be vigilant. What do you mean be vigilant? God said, be ready. He said, be ready, be watchful. Why? Because God said, we got to watch, my God, that you don't get too emotional. Don't let your emotion. Hinder your promotion. Oh, God. Amen. He said, you got to watch. You got to be careful of yourself. Don't be, amen. Because he don't want your emotion to hinder your promotion. What God has for you, sir. What God has for you, ma'am. What God's going to do for you is getting ready to happen. He said, but be watchful. You got to be alert. You got to be vigilant. You got to be watchful in this season. Amen. He got to be, be ready for the shift. Come on, get ready. You got to, as my wife said, stay woke. You got to stay woke. Come on, somebody. Somebody got to, amen. You got to keep your eyes focused. You got to keep your vision focused. You got to keep your, your attention focused. You got to focus on what God has for you. Somebody out of my God, after this, whoo, whoever this is for, I come to tell you, you got to go to go through this to get that. My God, you got to go through this in order for you to get that. And I promise you that when you go through this, God's going to grant you that. When you go through this, God is going to reward you that. In other words, it's going to happen day after day, night after night, after you've gone through this, there's reward for you, sir. There's reward for you, man. He said, be, uh, he said, be, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, not your cousin, not your co-worker, 
not that person you deal with every day. He said, it's as a raw light walking about seeking who he may devour. He's a, he's a, amen. He's a, God said, I'm going to exalt you, but you got to be vigilant. You got to be watchful. You got to be ready. Don't allow, amen. Don't, don't, <laughs> my God, don't allow what you're going through to hinder you from what you're going to. In other words, don't give up on your go up. <laughs> don't give up on your go up. In some cases, don't give up on your grow up. And not only are you going to go through, you're going to grow through. My God, this is the moment that you realize after this, he said, as a roaring lion, the enemy come as a roaring lion. He, he, he want to make sounds that would intimidate you. He's going to say all these times, he's going to do things that try to intimidate you, that try to discourage you. My God, the devil said, he wondered, who can I distract uh, from the new? From the new thing, he said, God said, but you got to go through this. The devil said, who can I distract? I'm going to throw, I mean, I'm going to throw the hospital bill at her. I'm going to throw, amen, the, the denial at her. I'm going to throw the rejection at him. I'm going to throw, amen, the disapprovement of them uh, at him. I'm going to throw low self-esteem at them. He's doing everything he can to distract you in your bit. He's distracting you while you go through this because he's trying to hinder you. From getting that. I come to tell you after this, you will see why you had to fight. You ever been through a storm and when you, my God, hallelujah. You ever been through a storm, but you kept on driving. You say, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep on driving. Glory to God. And when you drove through the storm and you look back, you said, I end up right here because I went through the storm. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're going through a storm. You're going through a struggle. You're going through a situation, but your this is going to take you to your that. Come on, your this, whatever you're after, this is going to push you towards that. It's going to push you towards your promise. It's going to push you toward what God has for you. After this, somebody ought to shout it. You ought to lay hands on yourself. You ought to encourage yourself. The next time you look in the mirror, just look in the mirror and tell that person in the mirror, or you just keep on, keep on, keep on fighting. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on pressing. Keep on running. Keep on leaping. Keep on doing what you're doing. Because after this, and you might be crying right now, but after this, you might be suffering right now, but after this, you may be in pain right now, but after this, you may be in the struggle right now, but after this, you may be feeling low right now, but after this, you may be feeling defeated right now. But after this, you may feel like no one is on your side. But after this, I promise you, after this, God's going to show you, you have to go through this in order for you to get that. He said, who resist that fast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are in your accomplished in your brother that are in the world. Come on, Psalm 34 and 19. It said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but God will deliver him from them all. My God, many, you're going to go through some things. The Bible said, a man born of a woman is of a few days and they are full of trouble. But your trouble won't hinder your double. Oh, God, don't let your trouble hinder you from your double. <laughs> God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. My God, come on, Isaiah 6, is, amen, and 17. I think that's somewhere in there, 61 and 17. God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. In other words, don't let your trouble keep you from your double. Why? Because after this, God's going to grant you those things. After this, God's going to give you what you deserve. I mean, what you desire. God's going to give you those things. He said, whom resist that bad in the faith, knowing that the same affliction, there is somebody that can testify of what you are going through. They say, girl, you just hold on. Yeah, I went through the same thing. What if? Watch this. Everybody that's watching this, amen, everybody understand my voice. What if your mother would have said, uh-uh, this hurt too bad. I can't, I can't push this baby. No, this hurt too bad. I can't do this. What if your mom would have said, I can't do it. You wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here today. But because our mother said, uh-uh, it's worth the push. God Almighty, I don't know who I'm talking to, but what you're going through is worth the pushing. What you're what's coming after this is worth the pushing. Is worth the pain. 
It's worth the, amen, uncomfortable situation. It's worth the, amen, the stress. It's worth the hurt. Come on. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on doing. You got to keep on going. It's worth the push. It's worth the pain. It's worth being uncomfortable. It's worth being stressed. Come on. It's worth the hurt. God said, that's the push. I just broke push down. Go over to God. He said, keep on pushing. The pain, he said, push. The uncomfortable situation, he said, push. The stretching, he said, push. Come on, mother. When mother is birthed and she's being stretched, she uh, the stretching. Somebody ain't, you're not going to stress out. You're getting ready to stretch out. God Almighty. I said, you're not going to stress out. You're going to stretch out. It's worth the hurt by God. That God said, whatever you're going through, I know it's hurting, but it's part of your future. My God, he's going to exalt you in due time. Don't give up on your go up. Somebody's about to go up. Somebody's about to experience grace. Somebody's about to experience another level of grace. So don't give up. Why? Because after this, my God, God's going to do a great thing. After this, who is it steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplishing your brother, which is in the world. Here it is. He said, but the God of all grace, come on, but the God of all, you going through some things, but the God you serve, you went through some pain, but the God, somebody I shout, but God, <laughs> but God, I'm my God. I was ignored. I was looked over, but God, I went through the divorce. But God, that's what you're saying. You went through the struggle, but God. You said you went through the pain, but God. You went through the hurt and heartache, but God. You went through being let down, but God. The relationship didn't work, but God. Why? But the God of all grace, the God of all favor, the God of all honor. Come on. When you have grace, you have honor. God, the God of all grace, who have called you unto his eternal glory. My God, call us. He's called us to our eternal glory. Your story going to bring God glory. <laughs> I said it all the time, y'all. I know you said, Bishop, you said it all the time. Your story is about to bring God's glory. My God, you are part of his story. <laughs> this going down in history, but it's part of his story. God's going to be able to say, look at my daughter. Look at my son. They still going. They, they mount up with wings. They waited on me, God Almighty. He said, they that wait up on the Lord, amen, shall renew their strength. Somebody's strength is about to be renewed. I don't know who it all is, but because you're tuned in this morning, because you're tuned into this video, you said, my strength is, my strength is about to be renewed. God said, after this, my God, listen, last night, there was a major uh, storm in our area. My God, the wind was blowing. The, I mean, the hail. I think we even, my wife and I, we even heard hail hitting the window. My God, it was a major storm in the late night hour. It was a major storm. Glory to God. But I woke up this morning. The sun was shining. Come on, somebody. In the midst of your storm, the sun still going to shine. Come on. With, and, and, and there it is again, Psalm 35. It may be storming in your life right now. But keep on going. Time is still ticking. When I woke up this morning, the sun was shining. No, no evidence of the storm of last night, other than my lights probably then blew off or something. But anyway, <laughs> in the midst of the storm, some things gonna be out of place. In the midst of the storm, some things gonna get blown out of portion. But watch this. God said, I'm still gonna cause my sun to shine. It's gonna brighten your day. Hey, you may have gone through the same that during the night. But I'm going to brighten your day. You may have gone through the thing. Yet what you did, what you went through as a little girl, amen, is not going to hinder you from what God has for you as a woman. What you went through as a little boy, don't let it hinder you from what God has for you as a man. God said, after this, whoo, God Almighty, after this, you would experience greater. After this, you're going to experience, experience the thing of God. What God has for you. It is for you. My God. He said, but the God of all who have called us unto his eternal glory. God said, I called you for this. God said, I chose you for this. God said, I picked you for this. God, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to say my name. Lamonte, God picked you for this day. <laughs> Lamonte, God picked you for this moment. Lamonte, God picked you for this assignment. Lamonte, God picked, call your name. Tell you. Amen. Say it to you. That God picked you for this. He picked you for this so you can go to that. He said, after this, you will experience what I have for you. The God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. 
after here it is y'all key word he said after you have suffered a while after you have gone through the suffering but the god of all grace to call us into his eternal glory romans 8 and 18 y'all know what it says my god he said i reckon that the suffering of this present time this is romans 8 and 18 look it up at your own leisure he said i reckon that the suffering of this present time the present time I reckon that the suffering of this of this is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So I reckon the suffering of this is not compared, is not worthy to be compared to that. <laughs> the suffering of your this is not worthy to be caught compared to your that. There's a word, amen. Y'all may have to get the dictionary. It is a word. It's called flossonasonahilopilification. Flossonasonahilopilification. It means the comparison of something. In other words, one thing comparing to the other thing is not worthy of it. God said what you're going through now is the flossonasonahilopilification of what you're going to get later. Y'all better look that word up. <laughs> In other words, God said it's not worthy to be compared is less than what you're going to get. Yo, this is less than yo that. My God. God said, yo, now, oh, there it is, is not yo later. What you're going through now is not even compared to what you're getting ready to get in your later. He said, after this, after this, God's going to do great things. My God, after this, God's going to show you greater. After this, after you have suffered, after you've gone through the pain, after you've gone through the struggle, after you've gone through the mistreatment, after you've gone through the rumors, after you've gone through the lies, after you've gone through the defeat, after you've gone through losing your family member, after you've gone through all that, God said, after this, I grant unto you what I have for you in your that. My God. He said, the God of all good, who called us in after you have suffered, not a microwave suffer, a while. Come on. God said, you're going to get experience out of this. Oh, God Almighty. I felt that right there in my spirit. God said, you're going to get some experience out of this. This is not just to kill you. This is to build you. God said, you're going to get experience. You're going to be able to help somebody else that go through the same thing. Why? Because you're going to be able to tell them, girl, I went through that, but guess what? I, I, came, out of, I came out of that situation with my hands up and with the upper hand. God Almighty. Somebody better praise God right there. You said, I, went, I had to go through this in order for me to get that. He said, after you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect. I, in other words, God said, I'm about to complete you. You won't have to look for nobody else approbation, approval. God said, I'm getting ready to uh, complete you. You're going to be complete. You're going to be a complete woman. You don't need a, hey man, if you're not married, you don't need a man to be complete. Come on. If you're a, if you're a, man, if you're a man, you don't need a wife to be complete. It would be good that you're married. Amen. But don't, if you're not complete before you meet that person, my God, you want, God, you need to know, in other words, you need to know who you are before you meet the next person. God said, I'm about to complete you. Some of you married and you've been destroyed. Some of you are mothers and you've been destroyed, but God said, I'm going to complete you. I'm going to make you perfect. I'm getting ready to restore unto you the years. Come on, Joel 2 and 25. I'm going to restore unto you the years, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, the caterpillar, all those that have eaten up you, the things that have eaten up on you throughout the years, God said, I'm going to restore it unto you. I'm going to cause you to be complete again. The prophet, y'all remember the a nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, and all, had a great fall or whatever. Amen. And all the king's men, they couldn't put Humpty Dumpty again. Well, the problem was Humpty Dumpty went to the wrong person. God said, I'm going to complete you. I'm going to put you back together. What you lost in Mississippi, what you lost in Arkansas, what you lost over there on the job, what you lost in that relationship, what you lost over there, God said, I'm going to bring it back together. Whoa. He said, I'm going to put you back together. Why? Because after this, you're going to be complete. You're going to be complete for the assignment. You're going to be complete for the task. You're going to be complete because God's going to do it for you after this. But you got to go through the suffering. <laughs> you got to push, baby. You got to push. You got to stretch. You, well, you got to go. 
It's worth the push. It's worth the pain. It's worth being uncomfortable. It's worth the stretching. It's worth the hurt. God said, you got to push, though. He said, you got to praise him until something happens. <laughs> God Almighty, he said he will make you perfect. He will establish you. In other words, you're going to be in a place of establishment. God is getting ready to make your name great. Whoa, I felt that. He said, I'm not going to make your title great. He said, I'm going to make your name great. He's about to establish you. You're about to buy property. No one in your family ever been able to do what you've done. You're about to graduate college. No one ever in your family ever graduated like you getting ready. God said, you're about to be honored. He's going to, he prepared a table for you. My God, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you from the hood to some good, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to bring you from the hood to the suburb. I'm going to put you in places that no one that's connected to you ever been because he's about to establish your name. Why? Because you went through the struggle. You went through the pain. You went through the thing. You had to go through this in order for you to get that. He said, I'm going to strengthen you. Come on. Somebody better flex your muscles. This is the hour that God is about to strengthen you. You were weak. You were about to give up. But I promise you today, if you don't give up, my God, don't I decree today that you will not give up on your go up. My God, you are about to throw in a towel, but take the towel and say, let the let your towel be an example to the enemy. Let your towel be a, a, an evidence to exhibit to the enemy. I was, you almost had me, but by the strength of God, I bounced back. Come on, somebody. By the strength of God, you end up bouncing back. By the strength of God, you end up coming back because after this, you're going to experience great. He said, I will establish you. I will strengthen you. Here it is. He said, now, after I've made you perfect, after I've completed you, after I established your name, after I gave you strength, he said, I'm going to settle you. You won't have to bounce all over the place trying to get everybody's opinion. What do you think about me? What do you think? I told my wife, well, my wife told me, well, I told the saints, I told the faith. I said, the next time y'all go to the car lot, Stop asking people how you look in the car and start asking people what the car looked like with you, how the car looked like with you, <laughs> not how you look with the car, how the car look, does the car fit your character, does the car fit your ability, does the car fit you, God of mine, not you fit the car, the car need to fit you, come on, you need to, say, when you go to the, put on the dress or whatever, you said, hey, does this dress fit me, in other words, if it doesn't, it can't, it can't be with me. And oh, God said, I'm going to settle you. You're going to know who you are. You're going to know your character. You're going to know who you are. You're not going to be caught up on old things. God said, you're going to know who you are. You're going to know your brand. Come on. You're going to know your establishment. You're going to know your name. You're not going to be caught up on what somebody else said. You're going to know who you are because he's going to settle you. He's going to settle you to the point that you know I'm in the place. My God. Joseph said, Joseph said, he said to his brother, he said, you meant it for evil. <laughs> he said, but God meant it for good. He said, but if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in this place. Somebody is getting ready to be in that place. Oh, God am I. That place where God is going to settle you. That place that God is going to make you perfect. That place that God is going to strengthen you. That place that God is going to settle you. He's going to establish your name. This is, you have to go through this. Why? Because after this, my God, I say you have to go through this because after this, God's going to grant you grace. God, my God, he said, after you have suffered a while, he said to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, God said, I got, God is all power, but God's going to give you power, sir. He's going to give you power, man. He's going to give you power to walk out of this until you get that. God Almighty, he said, after this, you will be able to experience that. God Almighty, my time is running out. He said, I ain't going to do it in due time. He's going to make you perfect. He's going to complete you. He's going to complete you. He's going to establish you in your faith. He's going to strengthen you in your walk. Come on, somebody. He's going to, amen. That which was annoying you is getting ready to anoint you. God Almighty, that which was annoying you is about to anoint you. You're going to be anointed. <laughs> When you come out of this, you're going to have the testimony. I've overcome by the blood of the lamb in the word of the testimony. What was annoying you is about to anoint you. He's going to settle you. He's getting ready to give you rest. My God, you're getting ready to graduate. 
You're about to flip your tassel. Come on, somebody. You're about to flip the tassel. You're about to graduate from this so you can go to that. God said, after this, you're going to experience great things. Now, let me do this. I got to do this, sir. I got to do this, man. He said, after this, what do you mean, Bishop? I got to break it down. Four words, and I'm going to let y'all go. Four words. He said, this. T. He said, after the trial. <laughs> he said, after the trial. I'm going to make you, I'm going to, I'm going to establish you. T, after the trial, I said it already. Romans 8 and 18. He said, but I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. He said, after the trial, no, oh, after this, come on. That's what I'm spelling. After this, he said, after the trial, you're going to go, you're going to, your trial is going to push you to your triumph. God Almighty. I say your trial is going to push you to your triumph. He said, after your trial, T, he said, after the trial, he said, H, he said, after the hurt, my God, don't let what, don't let what hurt you hinder you. He said, after your hurt, you've been hurt, sir. You've been hurt, ma'am. But God said, I'm going to strengthen you. He said, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to build you. I'm going to, he said, lay aside every weight. This thing that has been a hurt, it's been a weight to you. It's been dragging. You've been dragging that thing on. He said, but after the trial, he said, T, after the trial, H, after the hurt, my God, God said, I'm going to strengthen you. You've been hurt by close people. You've been hurt by people you trusted. You've been hurt by people in the environment that you were depending on. But God said, after the hurt, oh God Almighty, after the trial, T, after the trial, H, after the hurt. Watch this. I, after the insults. God Almighty. Woo. You, you were okay until you got insulted. My God, some people, some right now, <laughs> you thought, my God, you would never be insulted by certain individuals. You thought you'd never be insulted by certain things. You thought you'd never be insulted. But God said, after the insult, they tried to drag your name. They didn't throw just dirt on you. They tried to throw mud on you. God said, after the insult, what are you saying, Bishop God? It was an insult for you to lose your house. It was an insult for your bills, to, amen, your lights to be cut off. It was an insult for you to lose your car. It was an insult for you to go through the divorce. It was an insult for your children to walk out on you. It was an insult. It was an insult, sir, that you, amen, you were betrayed. It was an insult that you found yourself in, amen, eating, eating on the lowest extinct, lower level. It was an insult that you had to give up your house for an apartment. It was an insult that you lost, amen, your family. It was an insult. But God said, after the insult, God Almighty, he said, after the trial, after the T, after the trial, H, after the hurt, I, after the insult, some things that insulted you, those things that insulted, it was an insult for you to go get counseling after having suicidal thoughts. My God, but it worked for your good. Oh, it worked. I bind the spirit of suicide. I bind the spirit of giving up. But the insult, my God, God said, after the trial, after the hurt, after the insult, here it is. T, T H I S S. He said, after the struggle. He said, after your struggle. I don't know who this is for. My God. He said, after your struggle. You're a single mom. And you're struggling to take care of the kids. You're his wife, but you, but seem like the husband is not pitching in. You're a husband, and it seems like you can't trust your wife. My God, he said after the struggle, you in church, you in the ministry, you're doing, you're pastoring, but it feel like you can't get ahead. But God said after the struggle, he said after the trial, after this, y'all. That's what I'm spelling. T h i t h i s. He said after the trial, he said after the hurt, after the insult. And after the strength, what are you saying, Bishop? After this, he said, after this, he's going to grant you glory. He's going to grant the glory. My God, after you have suffered a while, he would establish you. He would, after you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect. He's going to complete you. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. Father, I thank you for the person you're strengthening while they watch this video. Somebody right now, tears are going, coming down your eye. You know this word is for you, but you know the pain is happening to you right now. You had to tune in this morning. You had to listen to this video. You had to stay tuned in. While other things were trying to distract you, you had to stay tuned in because you said, after this, I'm going to be granted an establishment. I'm going to be granted strength. I'm going to be made complete. I'm going to be settled. I won't have to go from place to place to feel who I am. 
God's going to establish you. My God, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to build you. He's going to strengthen you, sir. He's going to build you, ma'am. After this, God is going to do a greater thing. After this, my God, somebody shout after this. You ought to type it on the timeline. After this, after the trial, after the hurt, after the insult, after the strip, the struggle. God said, I'm going to grant you great things. Don't let your this hinder you from your that. My God, after this, God's going to grant you great things. I thank you for tuning in, my God, to Motivation of Monday, because after this, you're going to see great things. I promise you, I say it every week. I say it my father every day. Your now is not your later, because after this, y'all need to put it on Facebook, hashtag after this, and tag me in it, God Almighty, because I feel that God is getting ready to do some great things. You may have gotten a bad report this morning. But after this, God said, I'm establishing your name. I'm strengthening your heart. I'm building. I'm making you perfect. I'm completing you. He said, but I'm going to settle you. After this, you won't have to be wavering. God Almighty. Because he said, after this, you're going to get that. I love y'all. I'll see you next time on Motivation of Monday. I promise you, your now is not late. Your later. Because after this, greater is going to come. By the way, greater is already on the way. It's being dispatched. <laughs> To your house. Why? Because after this, God's going to do great things. I love you. See you next time right here on Motivation of Monday. And remember, your now is not your later. Be blessed.